Acts chapter number 11, we'll begin reading in verse number 19. The Bible says, Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but the Jews only. You ought to underscore that. I'm sure glad somebody come preach this old Gentile dog. Hmm? Uh, uh, let me help you with something. The gospel is not exclusive just to certain people. It's a whosoever will gospel. Let's read on. Verse 20. And some of them which were of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Then the tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man, and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. We know him as the Apostle Paul. The Bible goes on to say, verse 26, And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for all we have seen and heard this day thus far. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you, Lord, for challenging and convicting our hearts. Lord, thank you for being such a great God that you came, you left heaven and came to this earth seeking to save that which was lost. Lord, through the perpetuity of the church, you made provision that, Lord, when I'd reached the age of accountability, I too could hear the gospel and be saved. Lord, we bless your holy name. Lord, I'm glad you're no respecter of persons, that you tasted death for every man. God, I'm glad you made a way you bridged the gap from earth to glory. You became our propitiation that, Lord, we could be saved, we could be redeemed, we could be ransomed, and, Lord, we could be made true children of God. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless now, help this unworthy vessel. Lord, give us liberty. And bring unto my remembrance those things I've been faithful to study, those things that you put in my heart. God, help me not to say anything contrary to the word or will of God, but God, help me to say everything that you'd have me to do. And God, I certainly pray, if there be any amongst us today, unsaved, lost without God, I pray for the sweet Holy Ghost of God to sit down amongst them, and through cords of love, draw them to a loving Savior. And God, that we might see them birthed into the family of God. God, I pray for that one that may be saved, but not what they should be. I pray that today would be the day they'd be reclaimed. And God, today they'd be restored back into the fellowship of an almighty God. And Lord, they'd leave different than they came in. God, I pray for the choicest Christian in here, that God, you would revive them. You would uh, help them to be focused uh, like never before. And God, may revival take hold in this service today. May we truly experience something from the glory world uh, that cannot be accredited to man. And God, may we see revival break out not only in our church, but in our community and throughout this land. Uh, Father, do great things because you're a great God. Uh, now, Father, again, we pray you'd use this unworthy vessel that you'd be glorified and magnified and your people edified. I pray hor hell would be horrified, and I pray that, Lord, when it's all said and done, Lord, we'll bow these unworthy heads again and thank you for your goodness. Lord, we bless your holy name. 
Have your will and way. Thank you for the good singing, the good fellowship. Now bless the reading of the Word of God, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to several things from our text. The first thing I want you to see is the persecution. In verse number 19, we find that they were scattered abroad upon the persecution that rose about Stephen. Uh, when Stephen was stoned, uh, they found great, great joy in that, uh, and they began persecuting Christians. Uh, I submit unto you today that if that church at Jerusalem uh, would have been everything that God called them to do, they wouldn't have suffered the persecution. Uh, Jesus told them, as we heard in Sunday school, uh, in Acts chapter number 1, verse number 8, uh, to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the other most parts of the earth. Uh, but they chose to stay at Jerusalem. Uh, uh, scholars uh, uh, tell me that the church at Jerusalem, Brother Bob, uh, had grown to about 30,000 members. Uh, and they were all hoarded up in Jerusalem. Uh, and God allowed persecution, Brother James, uh, uh, that would scatter them so they'd be about doing what God had already told them to do. Uh, can I say tonight or this morning, uh, 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 there's a lot of persecution coming upon churches. Uh, you know why? Because churches are sat down on God. Uh, they're not doing what God's told us to do. Uh, it amazes me uh, how many churches uh, 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 no longer support missions, uh, how many churches no longer assemble to have church on Sunday night, uh, how they're not having church on Wednesday night, uh, how many churches don't have choir singing uh, and special singing, uh, how many churches uh, uh, don't go out and witness and knock on doors and invite folks to church, uh, no wonder uh, uh, God has sent uh, uh, a great persecution on our churches these days. Uh, I'm reminded of that message I preached years ago, you won't miss the water till the well runs dry. You ever wonder why God blesses our church? Now look around. We don't have any nobles. Uh, we got some notorious they're well known at the jail and the post office. Uh, we don't we don't have any any hierarchies or high highly educated and highly esteemed crowd. Uh, we don't have much but a bunch of old country bumpkins that was lost on their way to hell, but they met the Lord, huh? Some of you in here today look pretty good, but I remember when God found you, you was the off sky of the earth. Are you listening? Uh, uh, why is God so good to our church? We don't do much, and we don't have much, and there's much improvement that needs to be done. But listen, we, we do do some things God's commanded. We support missions. Uh, 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 we try to evangelize our community, and you take real good uh, care of the preacher. When you start doing those three things, uh, God will bless the church, and he sure has been good to us. Uh, but don't sit down and rest on your laurels. When you do, you're just tempting God to take his hand off of it and his blessings away. Uh, last couple of Sunday nights, Brother Ernie has come. He, he's come because his church doesn't have church on Sunday night and he can't hardly find one in his area that does. You know what Ernie told me a couple of weeks ago? So this is one of the few churches he's been in where he sees young people. Sad. Huh? Last year when churches were shut down only doing live stream stuff, we just opened up. You would know what happened. We had them five meetings break out and 15 young people got born again last summer. Huh? I say praise the Lord. Huh? When you put God first, He'll handle all the rest of it. You don't have to worry about it. Huh? Hey, I still believe He's God. Mm -mm. We see the persecution. Now, none of that was in my notes. Don't know where it came from, but there you go. You're welcome. Huh? We see the persecution, but didn't notice the preaching. You show me a church that doesn't preach, I'll show you a church God's not interested in. We find in uh, verse number 19, they were preaching to the Jews only. But just like God, there were some there that weren't Jews. And they filtered down where they were from and preached to a bunch of Grecians. And notice, if you will, uh, verse 20, And some of them, which were men of Cyprus and Serene, which 
when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. Hmm? Let me help you something. You can't box God in. Uh, God's got a way of revealing himself even when we don't do our job. Jesus said the rocks would cry out. Mm -hmm. But thanks be unto God for preachers. Mm -hmm. I'm glad there's still some good preachers. I'm glad there's some who still love this book and expound on this book and teach this book uh, and let folks know what thus saith the Lord. Uh, we find the preaching. Now notice the product of the preaching. Look at verse 21. I love this verse. You ought to underscore this verse. And the hand of the Lord was with them. By the way, if, if he's not, nothing's going to get accomplished. Jesus said without him we can do nothing. Hmm? But I'm sure glad when he is with us. Uh, and the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed uh, and turned unto the Lord. Now I don't want to get bogged down here, but let me help you with something. They heard, they believed, uh, and they turned. That's how folks get saved. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When folks hear what thus saith the Lord, uh, and then they believe, they exercise faith and believe on the Lord, uh, they turn from their ways and their lifestyle and turn to the Lord. Uh, we call that repentance. Uh, that's how folks get saved. Uh, well, and when there's preaching that has God's hand on it, sooner or later somebody's going to get saved. Uh, but notice the provision. I'm not going to read these verses again, but when the church at Jerusalem found out there's a bunch of Grecians getting saved, they wanted to look into it. That's just like a bunch of, that's like a bunch of Baptists. Hear about revival breaking out somewhere. Well, let's go and let's investigate and see if they're doing it the right way. Mm. Uh, well, this crowd at Jerusalem didn't want to believe it, that God was down there saving a bunch of Greeks. Again, they're living in God. So they sent Barnabas to go check it out. So Barnabas goes, and then his heart's made glad. He gets happy, happy, happy when he starts seeing what God's a doing down there. He does a little preaching himself. And he encourages them uh, 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 down there about verse uh, 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 23 with purpose of heart that they'd cleave unto the Lord. Uh, and he's a preaching, he's doing, he's saying, I tell you what, I need some help. Uh, so they sent Barnabas. Uh, then Barnabas begins to seek Saul. Uh, he runs down to Tarsus and gets Saul. Uh, and then they come back and for a whole year they school those new converts in the ways of God. Uh, can I say that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to disciple new converts in the faith. Especially in our day, there's so much false doctrine. Uh, we've got to teach them the right way. Uh, that's why we've been really doing that study. It's been going on for months now on Baptist distinctives on Wednesday night. So, uh, hey, I'm glad you're a Baptist, but you need to know why you're a Baptist and know what you believe. They schooled them. What a blessing. Then notice the proof that these folks were believers. Look again, if you will, in verse number 26. And when they... And when he had found him, Saul, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. The proof was that God was doing such a work, they said, you know what, that, that crowd right there, they kind of resemble Jesus. And they were first called Christians in Antioch. Now, Brother Doug, that baffles me. They weren't first called Christians uh, in Jerusalem uh, after the upper room experience uh, when 120 had been meeting for 10 days uh, and the Holy Ghost fell on them uh, and they began to, uh, to speak with cloven tongues of fire uh, and uh, uh, God set in on them like nothing they'd ever experienced. Uh, the crowd didn't say, that's Christians right there. 
They weren't called Christians when on that very same day, the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up uh, and he preached uh, and there were people from all different languages there uh, and people marveled because they heard him preach in their own language. Uh, and by the way, that's biblical tongues anyway. Uh, 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 and the Bible said, Brother James, uh, that 3,000 souls were added to the church that day. Then it says they met house to house uh, and daily the Lord added to the church as such as to be saved. They weren't called Christians then. They weren't even called Christians a couple chapters later when the power of God was falling on the disciples so much or the apostles so much uh, that uh, uh, people brought every means of sickness and disease. Uh, 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 they brought crowds to the apostles, uh, knowing the apostles could touch them and heal them. Uh, and the crowd was so big, uh, 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 Brother Josh, that uh, they just longed for the shadow of Peter to fall on people. And people were healed when the shadow of Peter hit on them. They weren't called Christians in. They weren't called Christians to over here in Acts chapter 11. where there's no miracles. I mean, God didn't open up the sun, or open up the sky and calm down and say, this is my beloved crowd, hear them. There's none of that going on. They were first called Christians when the believers really put into practice what the men of God had taught them. That's when they were called Christian. Let me say that again. Some of you are half asleep. Where's Lucas? He had a hard day yesterday. Lucas, listen. They were first called Christians when the believers put into practice or started doing what the men of God had taught them. Everything I mentioned before that was about the men of God. They weren't called Christians until it was seen in the believers. I'm going to preach on this thought this morning. I'm going to preach on, are you really a Christian? Are you really a Christian? You know, in America, everything's called a Christian. You don't believe that? I even named my son a Christian. Hmm. You knock on the door, if you ask somebody they're a Christian, they're going to tell you, yeah. And every politician wants to lump everybody uh, into being a Christian. They're even trying to say, we, we pray to believe the same God as that Muslim crowd. No, we don't. I don't even pray to the same God the Catholic crowd prays to. You know, uh, they try here in Florence to get all the churches to come together for... Uh, a uh, uh, prayer breakfast from time to time. I don't go. Why? Because I can't have fellowship with them. They don't use the same Bible and don't pray to the same God I pray to. I can't have fellowship with them. I'd be doing my Savior dis, dis, just, injustice, a disservice if I went to those things. I don't want to be identified with that crowd. I want to be identified with God's crowd. But are you really a Christian? Uh, let me give you the definition of what a Christian really is. Uh, Christian means to be Christ-like. Christian means to, uh, having the qualities of Jesus. Christian means a real disciple of Jesus Christ, one who not only believes in Jesus, but studies to follow the example of of him and obey the precepts of Jesus. Can I say a Christian is to be a mirror, a true representation. A Christian is to be a model, a standard of excellence to be imitated. A Christian is to have a mindset. 
Philippians 2, 5 says this, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, uh, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, uh, and took upon him the form of a servant, uh, and was made in the likeness of men. Uh, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Let me help you something. You're not a Christian if you think you need to get notice for things you do for God you're not a Christian if you need a pat on the back every time you do something you're not a Christian if you think your name ought to be on the marquee down there about how much you do around here hmm? you're not a Christian huh? Jesus came with this attitude not my will but thine be done hmm? are you really a Christian Hmm. Well, let me give you some things about real Christian. We'll go to the house. Can I say, first of all, real Christians have an inception, a beginning, a birth. Hmm. John chapter number 3, the Bible says this. Verse number 1, there was a man of the Pharisees. Let me stop right there. There's nobody in this building today as religious as the man I'm about ready to tell you about. He had dedicated his life to studying the law. Brother Eddie, he had the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, committed to memory. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. I have to think just to remember the names of the books. Hmm? This man, uh, uh, to the best of his ability, as touching the law, he was not guilty. He never wore blended fabrics. He, was al he always kept the Sabbath day holy. He offered up the right tithes. He offered up the right sacrifices. Uh, uh, this man, you could not touch his life concerning his religion. He's religious to the nth degree. If independent Baptists had to live like this man would live, uh, our churches would be a ghost town. So let me restart again. This, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He just wasn't a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He's a ruler. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus says your religion won't get you to heaven. Your morality and clean life won't get you to heaven. What you give in the offering plate will not get you to heaven. How many times you pray will not get you to heaven. He said, ye must be born again. He says, there has to be an inception. There has to be a, be a beginning, a birth. Yeah, you must be born again. Uh, there has to be a verse 21 experience uh, where you hear what the Lord says uh, and where you uh, uh, believe on the Lord and you turn from everything else you've trusted in and turn to Him. The Apostle Paul wrote 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, a beginning, an inception. Hmm? Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Just as there is the natural birthing process, there's a new birth process. Can I say? It begins with conviction. We overuse that term but basically what that means is God makes you aware of the fact you need him some people get under conviction so bad they're so afraid they can't sleep at night other people the first time they hear the gospel and they're aware of the fact they're lost they're not saved and they know they need Jesus whatever it takes to make you aware that you need Jesus is conviction hmm Conviction draws you out of your sin to God. Hmm? It takes conviction, then it takes conversion. 
That's an acceptance. That's where you accept that you're not going to heaven and you're not a Christian. You're not saved. You accept that fact and you accept the fact you only way you can be saved is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you accept Him as your only means of salvation. Him as your personal Lord and Savior. There's a conversion. You're converted from the ways that you're going to His ways. And then there, my dear friends, is a change. An altering. Your life changes. Hmm? When I got born again, my life changed. Now you got to understand, I was raised in church. My Aunt Lynn sitting back there, her mama had me in church for my mama, had me, uh, for my mama got out of the hospital from having me. Hmm? I was six days old the first time I was in church. And I was in church every Sunday. I was in church every Wednesday. Uh, uh, back then we had church on Saturday. I was in church every Saturday. I was in church. Huh? I learned the books of the Bible. I went through Sunday school. I memorized verses. Uh, my granddaddy was the preacher. Uh, I knew every mannerism he had. Uh, I prayed. I did all those things. There's only one problem. I didn't know I was going about it the wrong way. Till, till a Thursday night in March of 1974, the Lord let me know something was wrong. I asked my mama, I said, what does Paul mean when he's preaching about being saved? I'm glad I had a mama took me to the Bible, showed me what the Bible said. That was on a Thursday night. Come to church on Saturday night. The man of God got to preaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. But somebody else showed up and got to preaching to me. That night I realized uh, I needed Jesus. Uh, nothing else mattered. Uh, hey, there was a good crowd there that night, but I want to tell you something. There could have been 5,000 people there. It didn't matter. Uh, I'd have jumped over every one of them to get to Jesus. Uh, that night when the invitation was given, uh, I made my way to an old-fashioned altar of sinner, uh, but I got up saved by the good grace of God, uh, been saved ever since. Uh, why? Because God... Uh, honored his word and he saved me Jesus died on the cross so he could save sinners he loves you more than you know what love is a real Christian has an inception a beginning if you can't go back to believe you may not remember the date you may not remember the hour. You may not remember what the preacher was preaching on. You may not remember the passage that whoever led you to the Lord uh, uh, opened up the book and showed you. Huh? But you will remember the place uh, when uh, uh, you began uh, in Christ. Uh, you will remember uh, uh, the day when newness of life took over in your soul. Uh, you will remember the day you passed from death unto life. Uh, you can't help but forget. I've told you, my granddaddy had a, had a deacon, Brother Cordell Sherrill, the first man I ever heard teach the book of Revelation. Uh, 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 he was an old iron worker, but he loved God. Uh, and can I say that man got Alzheimer's? Uh, uh, that man got to where he couldn't remember his mama. Uh, I mean, couldn't remember his wife, couldn't remember his children. Uh, they had to put him in a home because he was so strong. Uh, uh, up in Dayton, Ohio, just for Alzheimer's people. Uh, I remember uh, uh, we was having a homecoming service uh, and his oldest boy, Jack, uh, went and got him, brought him to the church again. He don't know his wife, uh, don't know his boys, uh, don't know his family. Uh, but as soon as he came in the church... Uh, he knew the preacher who led him to Jesus. Uh, hey, there are just some things you cannot forget, my dear friends. Uh, you can go back to a place where you met the Master. Have you got that place today? Because you can't be a real cr Christian unless you've been born again. Mm. There's an inception. Can I say real Christians are indwelled? The Bible says in Ephesians 1, 13, here it is again, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, uh, in whom also after that ye believed. Heard 
and you believed. Uh, you put your faith in what God said. Uh, and then it says you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The moment, the instant somebody believes on the Lord, the Holy Ghost of God does a supernatural thing. He cuts away that stony, fleshly part of your heart and He moves in and takes up residence. And you're sealed. Hmm? There's a lot of hard things in the Bible to understand. And by the way, nobody understands it all because half's not been told. What can I say? Over there in first John, uh, 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 chapter 5, it talks about that uh, 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 we do not sin. That's a hard thing to think because I sin every day. You don't sin, do you? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, but see, this old rotten flesh, it still sins. But that soul that the Holy Spirit of promise seals, it's just as pure as the day it got born again. Mm -hmm. I can't find a better uh, illustration, so I'll use the one I like to use. Huh? My grandma used to can. You grew up in the country, you know what that is. So you didn't eat in the wintertime unless you canned everything you grew in the garden all summer long. Huh? I used to hate, uh, I hate breaking beans. Everybody do that? Huh? Them, them half-runner beans, used to have to snap them and break them and string them, and I used to hate that. And man, by the time I thought we was done, my grandpa would bring out another big old bushel of them. I mean, oh Lord, have mercy. Uh, I wanted to be playing ball, wanted to ride my bike. I wanted to do anything but snap beans. I want to tell you on a cold winter's night when Mama cracked open a can of them, a jar of them beans, uh, and we had them beans, I sure did appreciate somebody snapped them beans. Uh, but my grandma would can those. She had pressure cookers, uh, had two ovens, uh, and she'd have uh, those pressure cookers. She'd take them old mason jars, uh, and she'd put them beans in there, a little water in there, a little salt in there. Uh, she'd screw those lids on there, uh, put them in that pressure cooker. Uh, you heard that thing pop. Uh, that minute was seen. And it didn't matter how long it was in a garage, uh, how long it was in a basement. Uh, you could have been buried in the backyard, dug it up, and there's a muddy old jar. Uh, it don't matter. And the moment you pop the top, uh, those beans were as fresh as when they were put in there. Uh, hey, one of these days, God's going to pop the top off of us. Uh, hey, we're going to lay off this morality, uh, put on immortality. Uh, hey, one of these days, we're checking out of here, uh, and we're just as fresh. This is the day we got saved. The Holy Ghost moves in you. That's how you know you're saved. He's the one that gives you the peace that passes all understanding. He's also the one when you're about ready to put your foot in the mud puddle of sin, He says, don't do it. And then after you do it, uh, He's the one that says, I told you not to do it. And He makes you feel so guilty. Hmm. Hey, the Bible says if you, you're without chastisement, if you sin, you're without chastisement. You're a bastard, not a son. Mm -mm. Hey, God won't chastise the devil's children. Something you need, need. If you can sin and it don't bother you, if you can tell so many lies that you don't know what the truth is no more and it don't bother you, if you can uh, 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 carouse around and go to honky-tonks and uh, talk like the world, smell like the world, and act like the world, and it don't bother you, you don't belong to God. Say, preacher, you're not supposed to judge me. I'm not. The Word of God is. Huh? But your conscience is judging you right now just for saying that. Hmm? Uh Real Christians are indwelled. They got that when the inception took place. Can I say this? Real Christians become instructed. That crowd sat there for a year and learned the ways of Christ. Can I say? Then they were called Christians. Why? Because they sat there and learned? No. Listen, they absorbed the truth. Then they adhered to the teaching. And then they applied what they had learned. Hmm? And folks took note of it. And James says it this way. Not that James, because I don't listen to anything he says. But James says it this way. Chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. That's why I know there's not a whole lot of real Christians. 
Jesus said in the last days there would be a famine for the hearing of the word of God, not a famine for the preaching of it. There's more Bible being preached today than any time in history. With the internet and everything else, there's just not a lot of people doing it. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he's like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he, he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Hmm? Real Christians become instructed. They get taught, and then they go and do what they've been taught. Hmm? How does it work out on a job if they spend a lot of money training you, and then you don't do what they told you to do? You're looking for another job. Hmm? I wonder, are you a real Christian? Hmm? Can I say this? Real Christians develop an identity. They were called Christians. Notice they didn't call themselves that. Well, bless God, I'm a Christian. Says who? You? So, let me ask you this. When's the last time you was in a public setting and somebody come up to you didn't know and ask you if you was a Christian? Uh, that used to freak me out. You know what freaks me out more than when people walk up? No, don't know me from Adam. Walk up and say, you're a preacher, aren't you? I'm thinking, thank you, Lord. They didn't see me stub my toe. They saw something in me. Can I say this? Real Christians, Christ can be seen in their attitude. How's your attitude? You know, your altitude, your spirituality, will never get higher than your attitude. If the preacher recognizes somebody else's kids and not your kids, how's your attitude? Uh -uh. If the preacher singles out somebody else and doesn't single you out, how's your attitude? You know what y'all be saying? Bless the Lord. God's using them. And Christ can be seen in their actions, their conduct. See, it's real good. It, it's real easy to be, be Christian when you're churchy, when you're in church here. You know, we all got the pious smile and the Baptist handshake down and, you know, pat on the back, good to see you, bless God, and hey, amen, hope God's been good to you. Hey, glory. How's your conduct outside church? How's your conduct at the IHOP? How's your conduct at the gas station? How's your conduct on the job? Hmm? How's your conduct when you get cut off in traffic? Mine's really poor. I have learned how to horn cuss. Miss Annette's got it down too. She'll say, don't do it! She knows when I'm about ready to hit the horn. About every time I go through this stupid roundabout out here, I'm about ready to hit it, huh? She says, but they're always going to hit on my side. Well, sorry about your luck. I am not yielding when I don't have to yield. Matter of fact, I'm punching in that uh, fuel-injected 5.3 liter V8 I'm driving, huh? But how's your, how, how's, how's your conduct? How's your actions? Hmm? Real Christians, Christ can be seen in their aspirations. What are your desires, your goals, and your dreams for your life? Some people all they talk about is their 401k. Hmm. Hey, Joe Biden's really helping that thing out, isn't he? Hmm. Some people all they talk about is their activities and their events and how many likes they got. You're telling on yourself. The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. What's your aspirations for God? I talk to preachers, and all they talk about is retiring. I think you're crazy. I'm talking about guys my age. Well, Mike, I didn't think we was old enough to retire. Did you? Not yet. Lord have mercy. 
But preachers don't retire. Duh. So Greg says the slowest form of suicide is pastor in a Baptist church. Y'all kill him. No. But your aspirations, you know, it's crazy. I picked up. Where you at, Phil? Bless God, you're backslidden. I mean, you could, you'd be out in a vestibule if you got any farther back. You know how far it is to walk back here? Now, listen. This is me. This is crazy. For a long time, I labored knowing we was going to have to expand. I finally committed to it. And Brother Jake don't know what he signed up for, but I finally committed to it. <laughs> All right? So we're going to get it. I'm excited about it. Are you excited about it? Yes, sir. But you know what's crazy? I'm already thinking about the next one beyond this. That is crazy. I mean, that's crazy. I'm looking for property, Brother Tommy. That is crazy. Huh? That's crazy, though. Huh? I'm getting old. Brother Ray, you're getting old, too. Lord have mercy. That's crazy. I can't help it. It's on my mind. Huh? Hallelujah, we're going to get this, but that ain't going to be big enough. Huh? Lord, have mercy. If you catch me walking around somebody else's property praying over it, don't have me committed, all right? But real Christians have aspirations. I'm not saying I'm a real Christian. Some days I'm a sorry Christian. But real Christians have aspirations that are godly. Real Christians, Christ can be seen in how they address people in conversation. You know, the Bible says, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. How's your language? How do you talk to other people? Do you talk to them hateful? When you're on, on, on you know... That thing I always get on and you get mad at me when I mention it. I won't say it. I think James calls it Facebook. Hey, are you liking things on there that aren't Christian? Something that's a little foul mouth and everything you think's cute and you like it, you're telling the world you accept that behavior. We used to tell our kids, don't put on anything on there because once you do, you can't take it back. Don't put in anything on there you'd be ashamed of. Hmm? You're all about to die. Real Christians, Christ can be seen in their attire. Uh-oh. You remember when we read about Nicodemus about 20 minutes ago? Do you realize Nicodemus called Jesus Rabbi? Now, let me help you something. Nicodemus isn't no idiot. I know I'm not supposed to say it in front of children, but I just did. Nicodemus is a ruler of the Pharisees. He knew who all the Pharisees were. Why is he calling Jesus rabbi? He knows Jesus wasn't a rabbi of a synagogue. He knows Jesus hasn't studied under Gamal or any of the other certified teachers. He hadn't been to the Pharisee school. Why does he call him rabbi? Could it be the way Jesus looked? Absolutely. Can I say this? If the high priest didn't have on the proper attire when he entered the sanctuary, God took his life. And it would be a great day in our life when we realize when we enter the house of God, this is life or death. Maybe people don't get saved in our service because we don't take it serious enough. Can I say, it's one thing to dress like a Christian when you come to church. We ought to wear our best when we come to the house of God. But people ought to see Christ in the way you dress and present yourself outside the church. Now here's your disclaimer, friends. Because some of you already write, wrote me off right there. You can be a believer, and you can live how you want and look how you want. But you can't live that way and be a Christian. 
You can be a believer, but you won't have any power with God, and you won't have any influence in this world. You can't live how you want to and be a Christian. Not a real Christian. Not one where other people call you a Christian. Thank you, Brother Phil. Everybody else not at all. I'll say this lastly. Real Christians are involved. Can I say Christians serve? Can I say Christians sow? Can I say Christian supply? You don't have to ask a real Christian to give his tithe. Because he thinks tithing is a disgrace. He gives an offering over that. And then a mission offering over that. And then a love offering over that. He's learned you can't outgive a cheer. You know, God blesses a cheerful giver and you can't outgive God. Uh, it'd be a good day in your life when you learn the secret of giving. I don't give to get, but I can't help but get because I give. God honors giving. Yeah, that killed the rest of them, Brother James. Christians serve, they sow, they supply. Christians see a need, they just get involved and do it. Christians submit. They submit to the Lord. They submit to the pastor. They submit to the authority. They just submit. And then Christians seek the Lord. They get involved. Let me ask you a question. Are you really a Christian? Are you born again? The preacher, I'm born again. I know the place where I got saved. Wonderful. If you can't go to that place, today would be a good day for you to get born again. The preacher, I'm, I'm saved. I know I'm saved. Well, blessing. Hallelujah. I can't wait to walk down the streets of glory with you. But are you a Christian? I mean, are you really a Christian? You know what this world needs to see? Real Christians. We don't need to see Pharisees. They don't need to see a bunch of legalists looking down their nose at people. What they need to see is people that are real, people that are compassionate, people that have a burden, people that will sit down and share a meal with them and share the goodness of God with them. They need to see folks that are real I'd stick both fingers down my throat sick at what a lot of people that, who claim they're right with God do. Give me some folks that are real, that know God and love God and love people. You'll impact this world. We need some real Christians. Are you really a Christian today? Only you can answer that question with the help of God. I wonder during this invitation if you'll listen to God and you'll be obedient to Him. Let's all stand, Brother Ray. Or Brother Clint, you come get a song of invitation. Thanks to listeners like you, you know, IBC say, has had over 100,000 views Bible on our YouTube channel. You if you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening. If you're saved, you ought to ask the Lord, Lord, am I meeting your expectations? Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. God, I confess, you know, there are days I'm saved, but there's days I'm sure not Christ-like. God, forgive me and help me. Those days that I am Christ-like, don't help, help me, Lord, not to get puffed up in that. Lord, I want to be found faithful. A Christian's life shouldn't be a roller coaster. It should be just steady, steadfast, faithful, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Father, the altar is full. Thank you for that. Help these dear folks. You know what they're crying out to you over. Lord, give them that touch of God on their, on their life and let them know you hear and answer prayer. God, if there's somebody here that doesn't know you, God, speak to their heart. God, help us to see them birth into the family of God today. Father, just move, touch hearts, speak to hearts during this invitation. We'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.